So someone on my Discord is kind of asking, like, how do you go about like solving problems and how do you figure out the implementation to these solutions? Like you might be able to solve a problem at a higher level, but then how do you actually like break it down and implement it in code? And I think that's something that a lot of beginners kind of struggle with when they're first learning how to code is because they follow tutorials that tell them exactly what to type, but they don't tell you how to actually like problem solve or figure this stuff out for yourself. And I wanted to kind of talk about like, how do you take a, a bigger problem and break it down to smaller problems by using this example uh, code pin that was provided by a Discord user named Yan. I think it's, I think it's Yan or Yan. Um, he's really active on the Discord. So he made this a while back and I wanted to kind of talk about like, how would you even think about solving this, right? So from a high level and what you have to get good at when you start doing more and more programming is take a big problem like this and find smaller sub problems to kind of figure out solutions to. For, so for an example, like, first of all, if you look at what's going on here, it looks like there's a character that basically drops down the screen, right? So if you can focus in on one small little sub problem of how do I get a character to be on the canvas, then that's what you need to do. You need to go and figure out how to code that up. What HTML canvases do you not, might need? What methods do you need on the canvas? There's probably like a draw, uh, you know, a, a fill text or some type of thing. In fact, we could probably see here, it's probably like called like fill text. Yeah, there's one here called uh, fill text. So like you'll go and you need to go and figure out, okay, what, the smallest sub problem I can think about is how do I make like a green character just drawn in the canvas? Okay, so you should be able to go and Google that and find solutions for that. And once you figure that out, like look at the problem again and try to break it down into like smaller sub problems. How do I make that character slowly go down? It looks like I, I would assume at like a constant speed from the top of the page to the bottom of the page, right? So then you go and you have to figure out, well, how do I do something on an interval, right? And you find that there's a method called set interval that you can call every 10 or 20 milliseconds and basically take the position of that character that you're drawing and move it down the Y direction by like one pixel or something. You can change and play around the speeds until you get it right. And after doing that, I mean, you'll get a character that's green moving down to the bottom of the screen, right? And so then you have to think about, okay, how do they make it so as the character is dropping down the screen, how do they have it like place characters, right? So you probably do some type of check that says if the letter has moved, you know, 20 or 30, 40 pixels, then I need to place and draw a new character. Now behind the scenes, like you're probably gonna have to keep track of some type of data structure to know about these characters and like their locations and how much time they have left. Because another sub problem you gotta figure out is like, how do I make characters that are on the screen fade away, right? So after about two seconds, they go from being 100% opaque to being probably 100% transparent. So you have to go and figure out how do you do that. Um, and as you're placing these characters, right, they might all have their own little time to live. And then after, you know, two seconds have passed, you delete them from the page and then you no longer see them. So you kind of solved the sub problems that are involved with making a single column of a character drop down the screen and you're placing characters as that lead character is dropping. And one thing you'll notice is if you look at the lead character, it's actually swapping characters every like, I don't know, a quarter of a second. Like it's dropping, it says E and then it drops and it moves a little bit more and it says D. So he's probably just doing another interval for this lead character that basically just keeps changing what it could potentially be. And then if it moves far enough, you just basically push a character to a data structure somewhere and you have that on the page, right? So then you have to kind of look at the, the, the bigger picture again, holistically and say, okay, now I need to do this like 50 times, 50 different columns on the page. How do you do that? Well, you probably just have the same logic that you wrote for that single column and you make it in a for loop of like, you know, 50 and you have the offset of the X direction increasing, you know, every 50 or 75 pixels so that you have columns that are placed, uh, placed across the canvas, right? Um, now there's some other cool CSS things that are going on here. Like it looks like the screen is actually like it might have like a perspective transform on it. You see how it's kind of like rounded. And as you get closer to the size of the screen, it kind of looks like the characters are actually like curved. So that's probably like a CSS transform. And you have to go and look that up and figure out, okay, how do you apply a transform to the canvas to make it kind of look like it's been morphed a bit. Now I'm that I don't even know about, like I have to go and look at his code to figure out how he did that. He might just be doing the illusion, but I do think, he might also be doing that with just math, right? If he has some type of X and Y 
um, I don't know, using like sine and cosine, you can actually make it drop in some type of elliptical pattern or some type of path, right? So as you're closer to the center of the canvas, you make it go straight, but then as you get closer to the side of the canvas, you bend it out. So those are the things that kind of go through my head when I see a, a larger problem that we got to solve. Usually you break it down to the smaller sub problems. And as a beginner, I think it's one of the most critical steps that you need to kind of understand because if you can't take a larger problem and break it down into these sub problems, you're never going to solve the bigger problem. So this same mentality applies to building out full stack applications, right? Maybe you don't know how to make a full stack application, but if you can figure out how to make a single script, write a entry to a database, then you figure out one piece of the sub problem. And then you have to figure out, well, how do I allow a, you know, a HTTP client to hit a backend server and then have that backend server right to the database. You already figured out one half of that problem, right? So you now need to figure out the other part of like, how do you spin up like an API and have it accept requests? And so just, I guess what I'm trying to say in this video is just always try to take the larger picture and break it down into something smaller and something smaller until you can solve the smaller sub problem and then just build upon that. Um, I do have a video about this, I think already on my channel, so you can kind of scroll back in the history and find it. But I just want to have another talk about this because I do think it's a good discussion for beginners to uh, kind of know about and understand. If you like watching it, be sure to give me a thumbs up and feel free to join my Discord if you want to talk to me directly or just find a place to ask questions if you're stuck with coding. Have a good day and happy coding.